The Charleston carriage industry sent a recent letter to the Charleston Animal Society asking them to start a scientific study on horses and mules. In this special edition of Quentin's Close Ups, I sit down with Broadway Kristoff of the Charleston carriage industry. Broadway, it is so good to see you. It's good to see you too. I appreciate this. You know, you and a couple other folks from the Charleston carriage industry released a press release uh, maybe a day ago. I'm going to get that to, to that in just a second. Okay. But I'm wondering, what is it like to be you right now? Uh, not good. Uh, the animal rights people have uh, published a video that's actually doing really well. They have their own viral video of one of my horses. And uh, the video captions say that the horse collapsed. Um, all of the police reports and city reports and then all the other accounts say that the horse just tripped over his own feet. And he did. And he got back up and went back to the stable and he's fine and it's been fine since that day. But unfortunately the, the, this video has convinced a lot of people that the horse was worked to death. So as a result, I'm getting a lot of mail and terrible phone calls and threats and pretty much all the, pretty much seeing the worst part of people that a person could see. Mm. It's rough. And as a matter of fact, let me get back to that press release because this was released on April 23rd, 2017. To Joe L. Moore and the Charleston Animal Society, the Charleston carriage industry is calling for you to stop calling for a, quote, scientific peer review study and just do it already. Start tomorrow. Time and time again, you and your board member, Ellen Harley, who runs one of your anti-carriage subgroups, the Charleston Carriage Horse, Horse Advocates, try to convince the public that both the carriage industry and the city of Charleston are standing in the way of you doing your, quote, scientific peer review study, unquote. I don't speak for the city, but they have stated multiple times at meetings, you and I both at, and in the media, that they have absolutely no objections to doing, to your doing it. And yet you continue to state that they do. Just to be absolutely certain, I personally checked and the city said they, quote, welcome, the, welcome that study and we welcome the results of that study. The carriage company, excuse me, the carriage, the Charleston carriage industry, however, has definitely been vocally opposed to your study until now. Results of the study. What do you want those results to be in your mind? Well, you know, I'll tell you, I really, I don't have any expectation of the result. The results will be what the results will be. But I feel that if the study is done um, the way that AAEP, you know, it done, in, done in such a way that the AAEP gives it their full endorsement, then that study, those results will be valid and true. And so whatever they are is what we should be doing. Um, I, would, I would agree to that. Let me get to the other side. I want to cover both sides of the sure. issue, even though I'm not, a, I'm not able, able to interview Joe L. Moore from the Charleston Animal Society. But he both, they basically put this on their Facebook page, and it says this. Today's statement by Broderick Kristoff of the Charleston Carriage Works is a non-endorsement endorsement of Charleston Animal Society's call for an independent scientific peer review study of the carriage industry downtown. This is what Joe Elmore said, quote, the carriage industry thinks that they placed the ball back in our court, but the ball they sent back is flat. So if you were to sit up and send a ball back to him, what would it be like? Well, actually, I wrote, him a, I wrote them a response back uh, this morning, and um, you know, basically, for the Charleston Animal Society, this seems like a game. You know, this, for them, they, they like having this in the media, and they like all the media attention and the press and you know, talk about balls in courts. This has nothing uh, to do with any of that. And the industry is tired of going round and round. You know, we honestly tried to compromise. And, and while he might, he says a couple, three different times in there, or at, at minimum implies that I sent him that letter, that letter that we sent him, that statement was all five companies in the carriage industry. I talked to every single company, everybody had input in what we put into that letter, and that was submitted as, as an industry. I just happened to be the person that sent it. Mm. Let me finish what else the Charles Animal Society posted on their Facebook page. They said this, however, Kristoff says the industry will not make their horses and mules available to take part in the study. This should raise a red flag with the public. Clearly, a study cannot be done without the horses and mules that actually live and work in Charleston. To use a replacement herd, as Kristoff suggests, would raise questions 
about the validity of the study and as yet another hurdle thrown in the way of getting answers on what compromises humane working conditions in Charleston. So what questions do you have for the Animal Society right now after hearing this? Well, th that statement, I mean, basically that's a long statement that just says we don't want to do the study. Th that's what they said. Okay. Because it, it, it doesn't have any, the horses that are actually used, that statement about because we won't let them use our right. individual horses right. in validating the study doesn't even make sense. I mean, we as companies get new horses in and retire older horses to other responsible people all the time, all the time. So there, we ourselves are always getting new horses in, acclimating them to the city, and then you know keeping them for 10, 15 years sometimes. And then as those horses retire, we get younger ones, and that's always going on. There's five of us, so that happen, is happening right now. Somebody's training a new horse, always. So for, for the Charleston Animal Society to suggest that somehow our new horses that we're training would be different than their horses that they were training, or it wouldn't even be their horses, it would be the researchers' horses, um, is absurd. And it also doesn't follow what uh, previous scientific horse studies have done. When they do studies on race horses, for example, they don't go to actual race horses that are racing and study them. They find retired race horses or race horses that aren't on the track, they buy them, they set their study up, and they run their study. Um, for the same reasons, you know, these, these animals are an investment. You know, we're not going to um, give them to somebody to experiment with. Let me um, go back to Big John, because obviously you said that he basically tripped up on his own feet. Yeah. When you go back to Wednesday to write down, what is the biggest thing that sticks, in on your mind, sticks out in your mind? Because as you know, I guess close to 12 million people have already viewed that. Yeah. What plays in your mind? Well, to me it's just, that video was produ was created and produced and, and, and filmed by, by members of the Charleston Carriage Horse Advocates, um, which is a terrible name because they don't really advocate for horses. Um, they advocate for horses to not do anything and no longer have jobs, which creates an unwanted horse problem. Um, those folks, instead of being responsible, now if they, if they want a responsible report, report that the horse tripped, fell down, you know, and then it took about one minute, if you actually watch the video, for the horse to get back up on his feet. Um, if they want to report that and state that they don't like it, fine. But to report that the horse collapsed and then lead everybody to believe that it was from heat exhaustion, when all the city's records show that horse leaving the barn 30 minutes prior to that incident on his first tour of that whole day, didn't work that day until that tour. He had been in front of water all day, except for 30 minutes prior to doing that tour. And how is Big John doing right now? He's sitting here. He's doing great. He, you know, I'll tell you the the irony of the situation is that while people are sending me all of these terrible messages about killing Big John, Channel Five is down there interviewing him for their news program, and he has a great outtake video, and uh, he. Is he's he's the same, you know. I he he's, has no he has a few abrasions on his legs okay. because he did fall down. Right. Um, but all total, he's in great shape. Mm. I, I you know I obviously I asked Tommy Doria Jr. this last week, and I, I would love to ask you this as well. If you were to sit down with Joe Elmore, or anyone from Charleston Animal Society, one on one, what would your first question be to them? My first question right now would be. What are your, now let's, let's say this. Can we make the assumption that the question I ask, I get an honest answer to? Because in that case, my first question would be, what are your true motives? Because I think everybody is wondering. You know, I, my assessment of the situation is that the Charleston Animal Society has great and talented people. Their leadership, however, is on this path of I don't know what, um, but with regards to us, it's just, they just chase us relentlessly, no matter what we do. They wanted the temperature lowered, we met, we studied a bunch of data, found out there was no reason to lower the temperature, lowered it anyway, to appease them, not good enough. Now they want it measured someplace hotter. 
because it wasn't they didn't get a low enough number. So no matter what we do, they're not satisfied. And so you know, I, I would ask what, what their motives are and, and try to get a truthful answer to what, what would it really take to satisfy you to where you would stop badgering the carriage industry. Rob Wick Christoph, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you.